Hi, welcome to Math for Game Developers. This is the first episode in what's going to be a series of videos that will show you the math that's required to do game development. And we're going to start this first video with how to do character movement, move your character around a screen with vectors. We're going to learn vectors. And by the way, I'm going to assume that you know things like geometry and trigonometry and algebra. You won't need any calculus for this, but if you need a little bit of refresher, refresher on trig or geometry or algebra, I highly recommend a number of sites. I'm going to put that information down in the description so that you can uh, get refreshed on anything that uh, you might need. So let's get started. Let's say you have a character in your video game. I'm just going to use Pac-Man because everybody knows Pac-Man. Everybody loves Pac-Man. But of course, you can probably draw a nice, beautiful character and you want to move him across your screen. So. I'm going to draw the direction of movement of this character. It's an arrow. And you can think of it as Pac-Man's velocity. He's moving to the right. Okay. This arrow is called a vector. I'm going to call this vector V. And I'm going to put a little arrow above the V. Because that, and the arrow just means that it, V is a vector. So vectors are how velocity is represented in video games and uh, I mean vectors are used for everything in video games they're very important and we're gonna see what exactly a vector is a vector is it's two things two things an angle or uh, you could say an orientation or a rotation so in this case Pac-Man is going right but he could also go up or left or down left or any other direction and also a length or it's also called a magnitude of the vector which is how far does the vector go so a very long vector means Pac-Man is moving very fast and a very short vector means Pac-Man is very moving very slow or the length could be zero which means Pac-Man is not moving at all and this is the way that vectors are typically represented in physics or classical math applications. But for game development, we actually need to do something different. Because we need to store these in a computer and it can be uh, difficult to use this format in the computer. So we're actually going to store it in a slightly different way. We're just going to use good old X and Y. X and Y. So this is for games. And that just means that, let me draw a vector for you here. This is the X portion. There it is. And this is the Y portion. There it is. It's just like when you draw your Cartesian plane with the X axis and the Y axis. Uh, the, X ax the X portion of the vector is here and the Y portion is there. So. We're going to use this format while we're talking about vectors, but I still may refer to at some point the magnitude or the length or the rotation of a vector. If I talk about that, that's what I mean. So there's one other thing that we need, and that is we need to know Pac-Man's position. Position, I'm going to use a P for position. That's where Pac-Man is right now. And that also uses uh, the XY scheme, X y okay so here's here's the formula we're going to use and don't get scared by the word formula uh, it's really simple pac-man's new position okay every time we update his position his new position p prime means that it's different from p it's a new p is just going to be his old position actually let me uh let me use a different color here i want to use a different color Pac-Man's new position, P prime, equals Pac-Man's old position plus the velocity. That's it. That's all it is. Um, and let's break that down and see exactly what that entails. So, P prime equals, let's look at the X component of P prime. We have P, okay. First we need the X component of P 
p. And then we're going to add to that the x component of uh, the vector. And that's all we need. That's all we need. So the new, the new x position is going to be just the old x position plus the x value of the vector. And then for the y value, it's going to be the same thing. The y component of the point plus the y component of the velocity vector of Pac-Man. And there we go. That's, uh, that's it. That's all we need. This is our formula for updating Pac-Man's position using a vector. Now we're going to go to the code and we're going to see how to implement this using C++. So here we are in the code. I'm using Visual Studio and I'm going to be doing this in C++, but you can do it in any language you like. C++ is pretty popular for game development, but Python, C Sharp, anything you want to do, it's fine. It's going to be the same idea, uh, so you can use a different language if you want to follow along. If you want to use C++, I highly recommend Visual C++ Express. You can get it free on the Microsoft website. There's a link below in the description. So. Let's get started. We have a vector class and a point class. I'm going to be putting all the functions relating to vectors and points in these classes. And In truth, most game engines, because they're so similar, they only use a vector class. But I'm going to be separating the two just to keep things clear what the difference between a vector and a point class is. And you can see the storage is that we have two floating point numbers. If you don't know what a floating point number is, that's fine. It's just a number and uh, x and y. If you want to use this in three dimensions, that's fine. You can just add a z right here and then add a z into all, your, all of your functions and it works exactly the same, but we're going to keep it simple. We're going to do two dimensions. And you can see I've declared a function right here, add vector. It will add a vector to this point and return a new point. So let's fill out this function. Let's create a p2 or p prime, however you want to uh, call it, and this will be the the point that we're going to return as the result of the function. So uh, here is on the right our equation, our formula. So the p prime x equals the current point x plus the x component of the vector, and likewise the p prime y equals the current point y plus the y component of the vector. And that's it. It's that easy. Now we can return p2 as our result. Now I'm going to come down here to where I have hidden a main function so that you can see how this works in action. We have a point uh, p and I've placed this at 1 0. So this is the coordinate where our character starts. And then I've created a vector v which will move our character two units to the right and three units up. And then I call add vector. So I, I add the vector V to this point P and I get a new point P2 or P prime, however you feel like it. And then I print out the result. So let's see what happens when we run this program. And here it is. The result is 3, 3, which makes sense because px is 1 and, uh, and the vector x is 2. So 1 plus 2 equals 3. And then the y component, 0 plus 3 equals 3, which is exactly how we expected. So at this point, you should be able to move your character all the way around the game anywhere you want to move him. And for the next video, We'll look at how to manipulate points and vectors even more to get more power with exactly where we want to move our characters. So, see you next time.